All right, we're going to dig a little bit more into our trig functions. Um, and we'll start out with this problem. We want to name the quadrants where these conditions exist simultaneously or at the same time. These are two separate problems, so I'm looking for where the sine is less than zero and the cotangent is greater than zero. So the way I do this is I draw myself a set of axes and then I do a little shading. So I say where is the sine, or in this case the y value, less than zero? Well the y value is less than zero in this region right here. Now the cotangent is the x over the y value. And if I take the x over the y, and that's got to be positive, that means I either need a positive and a positive, or a negative and a negative, because those divided by each other give you a positive. So that's going to be in this region here or this region here. So in that case, the double shaded region gets us our answer and that's in the third quadrant. Likewise, in this case, a secant is 1 over an x. So we're just basically looking at the x value and the sign again is the y. So again, I will draw an axis say where is the x greater than 0 that's here and where is the y less than 0 we've done that one already that's here answer fourth quadrant so in this case they want you to find the cosecant and the tangent value if the angle is in standard position and if it has a point negative four seven on the terminal angle of our terminal rate of the angle so again this boils down to drawing a picture find negative 4, negative 7, somewhere around here-ish, creates an angle, not very straight, but you get the idea. And what we're basically going to look at is we're going to look at the reference angle, or the closest x-axis, and create ourselves a little triangle, where we have a value of 4 for the x and negative 7 for the y. And we need a cosecant, which is 1 over y. And we need a tangent, which is y over x, for our two values. Okay. Now the problem is, since we're not in a unit circle anymore, we can't use 1 over y. We have to use r over y. So we're going to need an r in this case. To do that, it's Pythagorean, so that's negative 4 squared plus negative 7 squared, all square rooted, is equal to r, because x squared plus y squared is r squared. So I've got 16 plus 49 square rooted is equal to r, that's 50, 65. square root is r. So in this case the cosecant is the r value over the y value. r is root 65 and the y value is a negative 7. So we're done. Now in tangent since this is not dealing with an r value at all just the x and the y we can use both and that's basically given to us in the problem. We've got an x of negative 4 a y of negative 7, so 4 sevenths is the tangent. Same idea, asked a little bit different. Terminal ray passes through this point, find the secant and the sine. Secant is once again r over x in this case, and the sine is y over r. So we need r in both of these cases draw myself my set of axes, negative 6, positive 2, somewhere around here, draw that angle and its reference, there's my triangle, I have negative 6 over, 2 up, and now I'm going to find my r by taking Pythagorean theorem again, x squared, negative 6 quantity squared 
plus 2 squared gives me the square root of 40, which is 2 root 10, simplified. All right, and then we need an r value for the secant. 2 root 10 over the x value which is a negative 6 that's going to reduce to the root 10 over negative 3 and the sine value is equal to the y value which in this case is 2 over the r value which is 2 root 10 2 is reduced so that's 1 over root 10 and obviously we rationalize root 10 over root 10 and we get root 10 over 10 and in this case it's positive and we're done. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this problem. I am a fan of saying okay well if I know the cosine then I know basically the R value and the X value. So I'm taking it off a unit circle and just making a triangle out of it. And I'll do this pretty much on all these guys. So here's my R of 9. Here's my X of 4. I've got some angle theta. And I'm in quadrant 1 as it says. And so if I want the sine, I'm going to need the Y over the R. I've got the R already and I just need the y value which is a Pythagorean right so I have 81 is equal to 16 plus y squared subtract that it's 70 what uh, 70 64 is that right 71 subtract 6 not nah, like 65 sorry it's equal to y squared square root both sides and root 65 is equal to y therefore root 65 over 9 is equal to the sine of theta so this problem is a little bit different they tell us the sine of theta is equal to negative 3 fifths they want us to find the secant of theta we know secant is equal to r over x but they're telling us where this angle is okay and this angle is between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 which means I'm somewhere in this region here so if I want negative secant or negative sine I'm sorry I have to be in this quadrant down here because a y value which is sine y over r gives me negative that means the y has to be negative because r will never be negative so here's my 5 here's my negative 3 this looks exactly like a 3 4 5 right triangle and it will be alright so now I need my secant which is r negative 4 in this case oops I lied five in this case over my x which is negative four and that's my secant of theta here we go again cotangent so I've been given an x and a y value I'm told that sine is what I'm looking for so I'm looking for y over r is equal to sine theta and I'm told that theta is between pi which is here and 3 pi over 2 which is here so again I will draw an angle over here I've been given an X and a Y so it's 15 8 these would both be negative since they're in the third quadrant and to get sine I need an R value 8 15 17 another special right triangle All right and I can get this guy done right here that's negative 8 over 17 is equal to the sine of theta so now we're given secant value secant again is just r 
over the x value and it says the tangent of theta or y over x is negative. Well that means I have to have a positive and a negative or a negative and a positive for y and x. The only place that exists is here or here. So I will say that if secant is positive, that means my x value has to be positive, which puts my triangle in the fourth quadrant. So therefore, now I have my r value of root 35, my x value of 5. I need cosecant, which is r over y. We have the r value, which is root 35. Now I just have to find my y value, and I'm going to get that by taking and using Pythagorean. So r squared, or 35, is equal to 25 plus the y squared. 10 is equal to y squared. And the square root of 10 is equal to y. So got this. This is going to reduce to root 7 over root 2 rationalize or root 14 over 2 for cosecant however because this y is in the fourth quadrant this has got to be negative so I go back and throw a negative here negative here and negative here and I'm done so again the major influence here is that we're making everything a right triangle and kind of taking these values off a unit circle and then using Pythagorean theorem to solve and make sure you pay attention to which quadrant you're going to be in because that will affect the values of x's and y's.